Hey, what's going on everybody? Mal here. How are you guys doing today? Almost three months since the iPhones 11, 11 Pro and Pro Max have hit the market. Almost three months of a love-hate relationship that, you know what? It's time to set some things straight. So I haven't had a daily driver iPhone since 2016. I decided to jump ship to the Android side of things because of not one particular reason, but a bunch of them all joined together. And even if it's disconcerting to realize most of those same reasons are still here, I think this, the iPhone 11 series, is the best Apple has done in a long time. And there are a couple of things I think are the main culprits or reasons for why that is. And the first one, at least in my eyes, is definitely the battery. You can't argue that the battery life on the previous iPhones was good. It was passable. You had good, actually kind of great battery life with the cheapest of all the iPhone entries, the best selling 10R. But from there onwards, the 10S and 10S Max didn't really perform that well. And for the price you would expect that they would. This year, they have finally done something that we've actually seen with other Apple products as well, not only the iPhone, but they've listened. They've listened and tried to improve on both software and hardware, at least in some areas, and battery was one. Because this is quite a bit thicker and heavier than previous generations, and the battery life inside of this thing is just absolutely awesome. They claimed five hours extra of battery life compared to the 10s Max, but it's far-fetched a little bit. It's difficult to measure. It's not easy to quantify. The end result is what matters. And the end result is this phone has actually been around a one and a half to two day phone for me. And yes, I've had other experiences with other flagship phones in the past reviewing them that was almost same. But this is the first iPhone to have ever done it. And this is a super leap forward for anyone in the Apple ecosystem. Much appreciated. Now, the second thing is obviously the cameras. These three cameras plus the one in the front, they are definitely another very big reason why these things are doing so well. Not everybody buys phones for cameras. I know that. A bunch of people have been waiting for a new iPhone to upgrade. And just the fact that the whole package has upgrades all around, has incremental evolutions all around, made the choice rather simple, especially the battery one. But the cameras, oh boy, the cameras. I don't use other types of cameras. I basically shoot every single video you guys have ever seen, all the B-roll, everything through phones. Either my current daily driver or the phone I'm reviewing or testing or anything of the sort. And this camera is awesome. Apple has been running circles on the entire industry for a while in video recording and the front facing camera video of this thing is ridiculous compared to everything else recording 4K 60 with a dynamic range that is insane. But the rear facing camera and the whole stills capability is up to another level is like up to 11. Deep fusion technology, actual low light capabilities with the software that actually does what it's supposed to, even though it's Apple, so it automatically works. You don't really have the control, the granular control to turn it on and off and tweak stuff like that. It senses when it's supposed to be on and turns on automatically and it's amazing, works flawlessly and it's a really intuitive thing to just point and shoot. And this is sort of Apple's thing. You need granular control on some things, on others it doesn't have to be there. And this phone, even though it has Pro in the name, as they stated in the keynote, is not for professionals. It's for people who want professional sort of features, but they're not necessarily pros. They're probably gonna try to use this as just another phone that you need it to do all the heavy lifting of understanding what you need it to do for you. They're still doing it here. Yes, stills here are amazing. And one of the most impressive things about this camera is the fact that going from one to the other, it's seamless to the point where it almost looks like you have one gigantic, super sharp, ultra wide lens that then gets cropped into the you know normal wide one and then again to the 2x zoom. It's that good. 
all of the cameras take pictures and videos that look, are exposed, are saturated, are vibrant, like identically across all of the cameras. This is unprecedented. And I've actually seen a bunch of professional photographers taking a bunch of pictures on stuff like this instead of, you know, big ass DSLRs, just because it's more convenient. And depending on how you're trying to make it look, people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference or it's gonna be like super hard to tell the difference. Maybe another professional photographer could, but a normal person, definitely not. That was one of the main reasons why I went for this thing in the first place. This is a tool for me. I'm not a professional photographer, but I do work with this for video like all the time. So I was going for the video camera here and everything else is a bonus. And a very, very nice bonus at that. Now combine everything and you have basically the perfect tool because this thing works flawlessly across everything that I have. I'm working with a Mac mini, MacBook Pros and all that. And the seamless integration between all Apple devices is still a very true and very interesting way of making your workflow, your process easier. One thing that does bother me is when I record stuff that's too big and I have to actually rely on cable connection, it's way too freaking slow. I wish it was faster. Sometimes I take the loss with actually, you know, going through airdrop, which does diminish a little bit of the video quality. Apparently not every time I've done some tests that I couldn't really tell where it was, you know, lacking, but still it's not the best option, but it's better than, you know, really huge files transferring super slow through the cable. At the end of the day, what's important is that these past couple of years working with videos on YouTube and actually using this as a tool for recording stuff more often than actually thinking about it as a phone that's gonna be in my pocket and has to do with all this other nonsense. And as a video recording tool to make my life easier to be able to just seamlessly send stuff over and start work on one device and then go to the next, this has definitely been an upgrade. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do in 2020 with the next iPhone. And looks wise, honestly, I kind of grown accustomed to the weird array of cameras. And because of all that, since now I really don't see the walled garden as such a bad thing, because I'm feeling sort of like John Cusack on 1408. And by the way, if you don't like that movie, I don't know if we can be friends. Uh, either way, I was out. I was out of the ecosystem. I wasn't making use of anything that's exclusively Apple until recently. I started to go back again through some stuff. I've started to edit again in Final Cut, and now I have this again in my pockets. It's just the fact that everything works so well together that I really understand why people who are using all things Apple tend to not really want to go through the hassle of testing out stuff outside. And yes, even though there are other phones that do certain things better than the iPhone 11 Pro and Max, I am this year going to recommend all three instead of just one. Last year I told you guys there was no reason to go for the XS Max or the XS. The XR was the pick. This year you have three flavors that are all 100% worth it. iPhone 11, best value. 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max, best battery lives. One of the, if not the best display in the market right now with the best experience for HDR. Yes, I honestly think this display dethroned my previous champ, which were Samsung displays, even though it doesn't have ProMotion. And on a side note, I'd rather not have ProMotion and keep the amazing battery life. And don't fool yourself, something is going to get hit by ProMotion potentially and probably the first thing is going to be battery life. I can't wait until Apple actually delivers ProMotion into the iPhones without diminishing battery life to something below the standards they just set with the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. But still, you have two options for the best display and between them, all you gotta do is decide, do you like a smaller form factor or would you rather have a little bigger one? All three are super valid and that's why this is my new daily driver. And aside from this grid, which I cannot believe we are still bound to, I have no regrets. And that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. So leave any comments or suggestions down below as usual. If you're feeling like it, like, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of new stuff coming up. Thank you a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys later.